Fill my 
when I look up on his face. Oh, come on, thank you, God. Glory. We know he's the one that saved our soul. Far too. 
such a merciful and caring God. Yes. And like Sandy said, we do not deserve it. Sometimes we think we are so unworthy. But I tell you what, the Bible tells you now he'll show mercy on whom he'll show mercy. Amen. And then the Apostle Paul said, I am who I am by the grace of God. Amen. So we have a lot going on for us. And the book of Romans teaches us that God be for us. Amen. And how many knows he's for us? Amen. And Paul said, who can be against us then? Satan may try everything he can to come against us, but in the end, if we hold to God's unchanging hand, we become the victor. Amen. And I'm so glad we're not the victim this morning, but we are the victor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give God a good hand clap. I don't know how many of you have ever heard of Francis J. Crosby, great songwriter. He lived back in the 1800s. She wrote so many songs that uh, we sang yet today. She, she, she wrote the song, Blessed Assurance. I love that song. Saved in the arms of Jesus. Rescue the perishing. Savior. More than life to me. Ask me not, O gentle Savior. The one I want to bring out this morning is she heard this song, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. She was so dynamic in poetry, and she was a hymnist, and she was a writer. And she wrote 8,000 hymns, and more than 100 million copies were printed. Now, maybe you don't remember the name, but you do remember the songs, right? Some I just mentioned. And the one that she really wrote was Draw Me Near. I want to read just the verse of this, of this song. It says, I am thine, O Lord. I wrote thy voice. And it told me thy love to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sight. I brought this out this morning because what I want to preach about is getting near to, the, to God, getting nearer to God. Drawing that sensation from the Lord that would make us become nearer to Him. As she wrote these songs, and I, I do believe they are spiritually ordained of God. I, I believe she heard from the Holy Ghost and the songs that she wrote because I get such a blessing when I hear them. And I get such a blessing when I sing them. So I find this morning that she wrote that song, Just Draw Me Nearer, Blessed Lord. She wrote that song in 1875. And it still works today. Because, see, when you come in the house of the Lord, you hear the songs been sung. It's a time of worship. It's a time of praise. And however we get in the spirit of the Almighty God, it really can be done through prayer and through worship and through the Word. Many ways can be drawn nearer to God. But it seems like here in America today, it seems like people want to get further and further away from who God really is. Amen. They're ashamed to even mention the name Jesus. They were saying to really say there's a God in heaven. And they don't want to hear anything about the Holy Ghost or reading the Word or even praying. So it seems like we're going the opposite way that we ought to be going. But I'm going to remind you this morning, God still has a people. Amen. I said God still has a people that love Him. And that will honor Him. And that will draw near to Him. Are we any of us perfect? Absolutely not. But you see, when the Lord looks at you and I, He looks at our heart. Amen. And I thank God for that today because every day of our lives we become nearer to who God really is. Amen. So when you think about the song that she wrote again, that she wanted to be nearer to Him. 
That should be the desire of everyone here this morning. And when you want to be close to someone, you need to know who they are. You see, the Bible says in Psalm 7, 73, 28, it is good for me, it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. The psalm says it is good for me, it's good for you to draw near to God. You see what? And I'm going to bring out some things this morning I believe that can draw us away from the Lord. And I want us to listen to what the Word of God tells us here this morning. But it's a good thing to draw near to Him. When you're down in the valley, get near to Him. When you're having a good day, get near to Him. When everything falls apart, get near to Him. Because He is your Redeemer. He is your Creator. He's the one that loved you while you were yet a sinner. Amen. And Jesus died on that Calvary that we might have eternal life. Amen. So it's good for me to draw near to Him. Amen. Now sometimes we treat God like we treat other people. Mm -hmm. Come on. Someone make you mad, you get away from them. And we withdraw from that. I, I get that. So many times people don't do what you think it ought to be doing. You get away from them. And I think there's times that we need to get away from sinners that do not want to change or cause us problems. But I, like the song said, God does me nothing but good. Yeah. And there's no reason why I cannot find it good in my heart to draw near to him every day that I live. And here's the thing about this. Every individual must do that for themselves. Amen. Again, your God's a great big God, but He's only great and big to you if you have faith in what He can do and trust in Him and say, Lord, I will be near you every day of my life. Because there comes a time in your life when you don't have time to have intercessory prayer. There comes a time you don't have time to even pray. All you can do is say, God, help me. And he's right there. You know why? Because all the days you've been living, you were drawing nearer and drawing nearer. Every time you prayed him, every time you prayed, every time you read the word, every time you obeyed him, you were drawing nearer to him. Amen. So it's a good, it's good for me to draw near to God. Matthew 15, 8 says, talking about a group of people Jesus was talking to here. He said, people, these, these people, Draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Your attitude toward God means everything. Let me say that again. Your attitude toward God means everything. Somebody said, Brother Baker, I've always been near God. And I'm glad you can say that. Amen. But there's been times in my life when it seemed like I would get very shallow. Amen. In my worship. And very shallow in my Bible reading. And very shallow in my praying. And it seemed like I wasn't having any good days anymore. You know why? Because the further I get away from God, the closer I get to Satan. And when that begins to happen, amen, the blessing of God can come off of you. And the hand of God can eventually come off of you. And you not like you used to be, but how many know today, amen, he's done me nothing but good. I don't have any reason to walk away from my God today. Woo, hallelujah. Do we praise him with our mouth and with our lips, but not from our heart? Think what he's saying there. We go through emotion many times in the house of God. We hear the song, we hear the preaching, we watch other people. And we go through emotion. Anyone can fit in the emotion. Anybody can do the same thing we're doing. But that does not mean you're getting near to God by doing that. It's when you lift your heart up to Him. And it's when you tell Him without you, Lord, I am nothing. And I need you every day. And keep me near the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when, it, when I'm going through something, let me know who my Redeemer is. And let me know where my help comes from. If I stay near to Him, that's the way I will be thinking. So when you think about the song that, again, Francis Crosby had written, I am thine, O Lord, and I've heard thy voice. And it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Think what she's saying. Yeah, yeah. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? It ought to be good morning, Jesus. Yeah, it ought to be able to say in your heart that this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. 
And you see, when you think about getting near to someone, you want to know more about them. And James 4, 8 tells you and I, this is what, the, what James said, draw nigh to God. He made that statement in the very beginning of verse 8 there. He said, draw nigh to God. And see, he's letting people know right now, here's what you need to be doing every day. And draw nigh to God. You might get mad at the pastor, and you might get mad at one another, and you might get mad at half rage on the road. But one thing we need to realize, it's not about any of that. It's how close do we walk to God. Amen. It makes the difference. If we walk close enough to God, you won't get mad at the pastor. Thank you. <laughs> you won't get mad at one another. Amen. You won't have this road rage going on all the time. Because, see, when you get near to him, the love of God will flood your soul. Amen. The touch of God will be there. And you'll begin to realize that this world is only temporary. I just had a touch of Almighty God because I'm walking close to him. Amen. And everything's going to be all right. Amen. So James said, draw nigh to him. And the word and is a conjunction word that ties us right together. Draw not to him and he. He. Thinking about God. He will draw nigh to thee. If we make our mind up, see God is not going to impose on you. He will not break into your house called your body right here and just move in without permission. He wants to understand one thing. Do you love me more than the world? Do you love me more than your things? Do you love me more than life itself? If you love me, then I want to take my abode in your life. And when I come in, it's because you're drawing not to me. It's because you invited me in and made your mind up. I want to live for Jesus. Amen. So if you draw not to him, that's how it works. You draw not to him, he will draw nigh to you. Amen. So the first thing we want to understand, we must make an effort. We must make an effort to draw nigh to him. If you call my name, say I'm a, in a parking lot somewhere, and you get out of your car and say, Hey, Larry Baker, I hear you calling my name and you're talking, but I can't hear what you're saying. I heard my name, but I don't know what you're saying. The only way for me to really understand what you're saying is I get closer to you. I get nigh to you. Can someone come on? You know where I'm going with this. So many people wonder, why can't I hear from the Lord? Or why did God talk to me? Because you have a distance between you and God. You must, again, love Him above everyone else. You must love Him in the good days and love Him in the bad days. Amen. And begin to realize, amen, that no matter what comes on in my life or whatever goes on in my life, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be on speaking terms with Him. You've got to make an effort. How many people come to church and we sing and we sing and we sing, sing, sing? Yeah. And they sat there and they said, Well, I haven't heard a song yet to move me. Woo! You should not need a song to move you. If you got God on the inside of you, yeah. Amen. Psalm 150 again says, Let everything that hath breath that praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing, you ought to be praising. And that's a good time to do it right now. If you're breathing, Amen. Lift holy hands unto Him and draw near to Him. Yeah. Woo. Glory be to God. Hey. Nearer to my Lord. When you think about what I'm saying, that people come into the house of the Lord and they've stepped through a whole service, yeah. never put forth an effort. I'm not calling no names. <laughs> no, don't, I see some of you frowning. No, I'm not read your email. No one told me nothing. You can tell when people are wanting to get close to God because they keep with an effort. They keep they keep doing it. They come to church and nobody else is praising God, that one person is. Right. If nobody else is saying amen, that one person is. If nobody else is getting happy, that one person is. Can I tell you something? I don't need no one's permission, amen, to be happy in God. I don't need no one's permission to lift holy hands. I don't need no one's permission to death in the spirit when I get near to God. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. So we draw not to him, he will draw not to us. But you got to put forth the effort. 
Well, I'm just waiting for someone to hit that one spot. Mm, just gives me that thrill and that chill. Woo! Could be some days you don't feel like, woo! You're going to be in that valley and you're going to be in despair and you're going to be in agony and sorrow and grief. You got to know you're near to him. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you're near to him, he never lets you go. So we must make an effort again to draw not to the Lord, and he will draw not to us. When's the last time God even spoke to you? Hmm? Come on now, preach, brother. When's the last time you heard from the Lord? I'm not saying every five seconds you hear from God. I'm saying, but you do hear. Yes. Read your Bible, pray. God speaks to the heart. God lets you know what you're doing right. He'll let you know what you're doing wrong because he loves you. And you're hearing someone say that because someone's near you. Amen. My wife accuses me of selected hearing. I thought I'm tuned in to Jesus. <laughs> that had to work too good for me. <laughs> my mind can be so... I, I, I agree with my mind somewhere when she's talking and I'm... I said, what did you say? Ten minutes ago? <laughs> you might be with someone, but you got to listen. Come on now. Even in the house of God, God speaks to like we are here this morning. God speaks to us while we're here. He'll speak to you in that song. He'll speak to you in the spirit. He'll speak to you in the word of God. And when he's speaking to you, it's because you're hearing him. And the reason you hear him is because you're near him. And I thank God because when we draw near to him, He's drawing near to us. Yes. Amen. So what happened to us? What happens if we quit hearing God? What happens if we don't feel near, near to Him? I've been around people a lot. And sometimes you get around them, it's like, I'm around them, but they're so distant. Yeah. They give you a cold shoulder, so to speak. Yeah. And you wonder, why aren't they talking to me like they used to, or shaking my hand like they used to? It's because they distance themselves from you. Right. For some reason, they've distanced themselves from you that they don't want to deal with you. Right. Now, let me tell you something. Human nature, that's what we are. It's human nature sometimes can do that. Right. But there are things that we do in the spiritual realm of Almighty God that God doesn't do to us. We do it to ourselves. Right. And the reason that we are not near God today is because of what we have done. You'll never blame God for any downfall yeah. in your life. And I told God a long time ago, anytime I mess up, I messed up. Anytime I go wrong, I did wrong. Anytime I say something, I said it. Amen. It's time we begin to realize that the only way God will again hear your prayer is again take the accountability in your life that I did this or that and I need to get it right. Amen. So that's my next point right here. So what happens again when we are not near God? Because we have unconfessed sin that we need to get rid of in our life. Now let's be very careful. My mom, I don't know how she did this, but she always knew when I was had done something. <laughs> what moms are about, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I would try to get out of that situation, and I'd lie to her. Not, no one ever did, right? <laughs> I skipped school one time. Got my car headed to school. We lived two blocks away from school, so I had to drive. So I got in my car, drove to school. I didn't go to school. I was fishing. Long about school time to be over, I went to Bethel Park, appeared parked in the car, and I'm just waiting for the time to be over. And then when it was over for school to be out, I would drive home and that'd be it. So I walked in the house and my mom said, How was school? Yeah, it was good, like always. It was good. We did great. But my aunt was sitting there with my mom. My mom's sister was there. Mom looked at me and said, what all happened today? I started making up stories. <laughs> and I began to realize that I've done pretty good, I thought. I told mom, to my mom said, there was Edith sitting there. My mom said to Edith, she said, Edith saw you sitting at the park. When did she come through the park? <laughs> She found me out. I'm hiding my sin. She said, you're grounded, boy. You're going to be walking to school. Two blocks? Because I lied to you, I got to walk to school two blocks? Yeah, I did. 
And that's the way many of us are today. We try to hide the sin. Yeah. Like my mom already knew. Mm -hmm. How much greater is God? Yeah. Come on. When he said, I can't commune with you because there's something in the way. And that something is sin. Yeah. And because of sin, I cannot talk to you. And I cannot bless you because God does not condone sin. And someone say amen. amen. Yeah. So read, look at this right here, what it says. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God, and your sin have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. In other words, he's saying, God has separated from you. And again, that's not been near God. That's been cast away from God by our own choice. Come on, can someone say amen? We make some dumb choices. Sometimes bloom, bloom. Well, if they hadn't made me mad, I wouldn't have cursed them out. I wouldn't cuss like that. Well, you, but you made a choice. If that car hadn't cut me off, I wouldn't blow my horn and run into them. You made a choice. If that brother had got my pew, I wouldn't be upset with him. You made a choice. It comes back to you and I that we make some bad choices and we get sin back in our life and wonder why is it God near me anymore? Again, I, 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 I've talked to many people that said before, again, they can just say the name of Jesus and heaven will open up. And they said eventually that stopped. And when they would say, Jesus, it didn't happen anymore. You know why? Because your iniquity, your sin has separated you from God. And God doesn't hear you no more. So we're not near God because of our sin. We're near God because of, of forgiveness. And again, we need to ask God for that forgiveness because of the epistle of 1 John, verse, chapter 1, verse 9, said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we find this out this morning. And again, when we sin, a division comes. When we sin, a gap comes in there that God is no longer near us like He wants to be. We need to get that back under the blood and make our mind up. And I'm saying we're all guilty of messing up. We are all sinned along the way. But again, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He will forgive you of your sin and bring you back in fellowship with the Lord and you get near Him again. Here a while back, I was in my bedroom praying. I went back when my wife was working. I was home by myself and I was praying and I was going through something in my life. I needed God to give me an answer. As I was praying, I felt like something in the room. I could sense something in the room. Something, a person, someone was there. Amen. And all of a sudden, I felt someone's hand get on my shoulder. It didn't freak me out. I wasn't fearful. Matter of fact, I was so blessed. I knew what it was. And I knew who it was. Isn't that great to know he loves you that much and you're so near to him that he can even touch you? I mean, you're so close to him or so near him, he can touch you. How many have ever experienced that before? Mm. Man, that's where you need to be. I miss those times when I don't have it like that. I want to feel his touch. Because he's near me, I can feel his touch. But sin separates us from that touch. Amen. I know many people say, well, I'm a sinner, but God hears my prayer. Sometimes God just has mercy. I don't, I, don't, I don't know all about that. But Paul said, we know that God hears not sinners. We know that is in the Word of God. But we know one thing is where your heart is, again, is, is where your God is. So if your heart is saying to the Lord, I want to change, He'll be there. And I want to be saved, He will be there. But if you're asking about something from the world, He will not give you the world to bless you with the world because you're sinning. Amen. He wants you again to cast away all that and get it back under the blood and come back home. Amen. And make your mind up. I want to get near the Lord. I've got mom, i got dad, i got brother, i got sister, and I get near them, but they do nothing for me. I need Jesus to come on the inside and touch me on the outside and give me my joy back, give me my song back, and then give me my life back, give me my peace back. I want God on the inside of me. I want to get close to Him. Amen. I want to lay down my sins. Amen. Mm. I know there's sometimes not popular preaching, but I tell you it's good for the pastor too, as well as anybody else. So many times we, again, are not close to the Lord because we don't have that desire to be there. Right. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.10 that 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made confirmable unto his death. Paul said, I want to know him. Right, right. I want to know about his suffering. I, I want the same power in me that he had on Mount Calvary when he overcame sin on Mount Calvary. I want to know him that way. I want to know about his suffering. I want to know how much he loved me and how much, again, he gave for my life. He gave it all that we might live. He died that we may live. He gave it up to give us everything. And when he said it is finished, that simply meant it was the beginning for you and I to have eternal life. But you've got to understand to know him is to draw near to him. You know, I, I get to know people a lot better when I spend time with them. You ever, you ever have somebody sit down with you and say, well, tell me, what, what, do you, what do you do for a living? What kind of car do you drive? Or where's your house at? Or what do you like or dislike? You know, this is simply getting to know people that way, that you know more about them. And that's what we ought to be about God. We ought to have such a love and desire to be close to Him that we again can know Him in that way. We can know Him in His power of His resurrection. The very Spirit, and man, that walked in that grave, the Bible said, if it dwells in you, it will quicken this mortal body. I don't know about you, but I thank God's people. The Bible tells us this, that we are lively stones in the house of Almighty God. Amen. How many knows at one time we were dead in our sin, but because our sins are buried, and our sins are in the past. Amen. We come alive in the Lord Jesus Christ and the same spirit, amen, that resurrected Jesus out of the grave lives in you and I too. Come on, somebody praise him. Glory to God. Resurrection. Every day ought to be resurrection. Because you're living so close to him, you've got that same spirit. You know the power of his resurrection lives in you. Think about that, man. That is awesome. The same spirit that resurrected Jesus is in you. Yeah. Somebody should have said, Woo! Woo! Thank you. <laughs> it ought to bust the socks off of you. He got in your Because we understand that we're near him in, in such a way that we know him in the power of his resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't need someone to preach to me and make me happy. Come on, man. I don't need somebody to sing to me. There ain't no grave going to hold my body down to make me happy. I like doing all that. Yeah. I don't need someone to say, Oh, Larry, baby, come on now. You're going to make it, brother. We love you. <laughs> if I'm waiting on that, that would, I'll be waiting a long time. Come on, man. <clears throat> you know what makes me happy? That I know him. Yeah. And the power of the resurrection. Do you know what gets me excited? That I know him and the power of his resurrection. Do you know what? Again, makes me do what I do. That I know him and the power of his resurrection. Because I'm near him. I know him. And I read the Bible to tell me more about him. His attributes are there. I've said before, sometimes... We, we, we shelter ourselves from people. I, 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 I'm, really, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Somebody hurts my feelings, I'm not going to come back and let you do it again. I <laughs> will. <laughs> Janice, now you're helping me out again. <laughs> I can't preach without Dennis. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. Good hearted lady, really is. But you see, again, to draw near him. Is to get to know him. Yeah. And again, that's why I encourage you to read your Bible because everything about the Word of God is about who God is. And again, somebody said, well, it's kind of boring. Let me tell you something. If you get in the Spirit, you can't be bored. Yeah. If you get in the anointed, you can't be bored because life will come in you. Resurrection will come in you and you'll be excited with a desire. We must have a desire to know him. Amen. I've already told you before that again, we must make an effort to draw near. We must get rid of our sin. We must have a desire to know him. Amen. We also draw near to him with a heart of assurance. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, the Apostle Paul said, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil, sprinkled from evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. He's saying that I can draw near to him 
in, in, in a full assurance of faith. That simply means that if I don't feel saved today, if I don't feel like the things are going well today, faith said I can draw near to my God by faith saying I don't I feel this way, but what I do know is God, you said you'd never leave me, you'd never forsake me, but go all the way with me to the end of the world. Amen. By faith, I might be having a bad day today, but by faith I have assurance. Amen. That God is with me and He's near me and He hears me and He loves me. Yeah. Woo, Anytime my wife went to work, she was gone maybe ten hours a day. I didn't question her love for me when she was away from me. Because I knew she was near with me in heart. And I know she'd be back home eventually. She was near me in that love. And that's the way it is with God. You don't have to always feel love to know your love. Let me say amen. amen. I mean, what I'm talking about. Yeah. You see, again, when we draw near to God with a full assurance of faith, it simply says, God, I know you love me. And I know you hear me. And I know you're there for me. And by faith, I know when I leave this world, I'm going to heaven. I don't care how I feel or what I go through. I'm near the Lord. Amen. I'm going to tell you what happens to this verse right here. Even when you, when, you, when you get that verse in your heart, You'll sense, you'll sense that. You'll feel that full assurance of faith in you. Man, you'll, you'll be assured. Ooh, I'm going to be all right. I like what the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. He went on to say also, if I, if, I, if I die, I'm the Lord's. If I live, I'm the Lord's. If I die, or if I live, I'm the Lord's. What he was saying, I'm assured that in life, I'm the Lord's. And death, I'm the Lord's. And when I leave here, I'm the Lord's. Whether I feel good or not today, it doesn't matter. Because I know I've been praying right. And I know I've been reading my Bible. And I've been doing what God told me to do. And I know I'm near Him. And I'm close to Him. And everything's all right. Amen. So you see, again, we have this, this church. Now, have you ever in your life got to a place about your salvation where you question, are you saved? Has Satan ever come along and said, you're not saved? Tell you, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. Come on. You didn't get that miracle. On, You're not blessed. Mm -hmm. God's not going to help you. Do you know what kicks him in the pants? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I do. On the backside, it's full assurance of faith. Are you hearing me? I mean, a full assurance of faith. When he comes around, he says, No. Come on. In my heart, I know who I am. Yeah. I'm assured. That everything between me and God is all right. Amen. And I live near Him. Amen. When the Bible says, Submit yourself to the Lord, yes. resist the devil, and He'll flee from you. Yes. See, when you're with God, you're in good company. Amen. When you're with God, you're in good direction. Right. And to get near Him simply means that we need to keep the assurance of our heart and faith that everything is all right. Amen? Amen. Not only that, but we also need to learn how to follow Jesus. Man, I'm telling you right now, there are so many people so messed up today following every preacher on the TV, every, every time somebody comes into a church service. Every, look, look, look what the Bible says in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, will enter in, but it's he that doeth the will of the Father. Not everyone that said, Lord, is going to be in is saved. Everyone that, again, you think prophesy, is not prophesying. Everybody that preaches is not always preaching. Right. And you'll find this how people are following preachers right. more than they're following God. Amen. And they wonder why he got close to them. Because there is no other God. Yes. He'll be number one or not at all. Yes. Look what Jesus said here in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. And what? And what? If you're going to be my disciple, you must do these things. You must again, look what it says here. Deny yourself, take up the cross daily, and follow me. Amen. Ephesians 5 1 said, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Right. Children will mimic their parents. Yeah, right. I've seen it happen in my own life. And they will follow wherever the parents go, they follow them. How many know this morning we are God's children and He is our Father? And we're to, we're to follow our Heavenly Father and make our mind up that wherever He goes, I want to go. And wherever He's at, I want to be at. I want to know again that I'm near Him because I follow after Him. 
And here's the key thing right here. Deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. Those are three things I think is very important. If we did those three things every day, I don't know how we can miss heaven. Right. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow Jesus. Follow Him every day. Get close to Him. How many of you ever got, you know, here got dog? You ever got dogs? Yeah. Is them dogs follow you around? Yeah. I mean, here they are on your lap, and you sit down on the couch, and there's a dog laying on your lap, and you, you push the dog aside, and go get something to drink, and next thing you turn around, that dog, woo, 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 woo. You know why? He wants to be near you. He has found comfort and food and, and a good home in you. And he don't want anything happening to you. And he don't want to get away from you. He'll follow you to make sure you're not going to go anywhere. Woo, hallelujah. I want to follow Jesus that same way because he's been so good to me. He put clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, food on my table. He's blessed me coming in, blessed me going out. He's always been there for me. Amen? And I want to live close to a man like that. Praise the Lord. I thank God for you people and all you do for me and all the prayers and all the things you've given my wife and I along the way throughout many years. But can I tell you something? When it's all said and done, at my point of death, when I lay down to die, amen, it's going to be me and Jesus alone. Can someone say amen? He's the one I want close to me. He's the one I want him to engulf me in his love and say everything's going to be all right. Amen? And in the moment of time, you leave this body of pain and sorrow, and you put on a new body. Amen. And one of these days, we're going to be in heaven with him. Amen. If I follow him. Yes. The Bible said the footsteps of a good man are ordered by you don't even know how to walk. Oh. We're like a bunch of babies out there. <laughs> Can't even stand up, do good to cross sometimes. Don't take me wrong, but simply say it that sometimes we don't know what to do. Right. We need God's direction. The footsteps of a good man are ordered by God. God will teach you how to walk. If he teaches you how to walk, he'll teach you how to follow him. Because yeah. yeah. simply in the word of God, you read it and do what it says do. Let me check my time here. I broke my wristwatch. So I'm not checking my email. I'm checking my time. 1140. Let me close on this right here. We need to get to a place in God. But he's all we ever need. Yes. We're going to find safety in him. We live in a very corrupt world today. We live in a world that's so demonic that people are afraid to leave their homes, afraid to go to a store. They're afraid to drive down the highway. They're afraid. As a matter of fact, I got a call yesterday. This woman is not leaving her house for anything. I mean, if she gets something given to her, somebody brings it, whatever, she's not going to leave it. She's younger than me. I said, you cannot be that fearful of things around you. Amen. We have got to understand again, that, uh, get to a place in our life where we feel secure in Him. Amen. We know we have a world out there that's corrupt and, and they're dangerous out there on every side. But we've got to have that assurance and we've got to have that faith that we are in a good place with God. That we're not leaving home without Him. We're not driving a car without Him. We're not shopping without Him. We're not going to do anything without God in our life. We draw a lot to him. Yes. One of my favorite scriptures right here is where we need to get. Psalms 91 1. He that dwelleth, that means he that lives in the secret place of the Most High God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now you know and I know that when someone's shadow is on you, they are near you. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. When someone casts a shadow on you, it's because they are near you. And if I live under the shadow of the Almighty, guess where my God is? He's right by my side. He's never where I go. And again, I thank God for that today because I know that He is near me. Wherever I go, God is near me. Amen. God's able. Yeah. Bruce, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. We're going to be praying for you. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Absolutely. Well, we're going to pray God's going to touch it. Just sit right there with the moment. We're going to pray for you. Uh, just good. I've known Bruce for a long time. You can see him in the house of the Lord. God's here to help us this morning. But I tell you, when we live under the shadow of the Almighty God, that's because he's near us. How?
How did God get near you? It's because you draw near to Him. Yeah. Draw near to Him. Amen. Again, understand this. If we draw nigh to Him, He will draw nigh to us. In other words, God will look down here and we cry out and God sees us in the distance and we're crying out for help and asking God to forgive us of our sins and God have mercy on me. And God, God understands that we're drawing near to Him that way. That's why God will draw near to you and say, I am here. Amen. I'll make a way for you. I will deliver you. And I am your answer. And I am your way maker. And I am the one again that dwells in your life. And we dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Don't know where you are today. How close you are to the Lord. Are you on speaking terms to the Lord? Amen. I don't know. It's, I think my wife would think it kind of odd if I didn't speak to her for a week. be odd if she didn't speak to me for a week. I could never be in quiet. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> well, God does speak, though. We get to the place where God, God there. The point of it being... I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Well, you know the thing of it is, is that God wants to speak to us. But when we tell the Lord, I'm not talking to you. God's not going to force himself on you. God, God, will not, God, God will not talk to someone that doesn't want to be talked to. We have to open our heart and have that desire to be near him. If this would be your last day on the face of the earth and your last service you'll ever attend, where do you stand with the Lord today and what's in your life? How close are you to Him? Are you on speaking terms that when you get in trouble, all you got to do is say, Jesus, and all the heaven opens up and the glory of God come down. Amen. And God is there to your rescue. Amen. How near are you to the Lord? Amen. See, God didn't move. Mm -hmm. If He did, He he'd gave me the address. He didn't move. We moved right. away from the Lord. It's like the prodigal son when he left his father's house and went into the world and spent all he had on righteous living. He went back to the father. He said, he came to himself in the whole pen and said, here's what I'll do. I'll go back to my father's house and I'll tell him I'm no longer worthy to be called thy servant. Make me a hard servant. When Jesus saw him come and he ran after him and kissed him and hugged him, can I tell you something? The Father was always at the house. Yes. And the Father is still at the house today. He's still on the throne today. He still answers prayer today. But you and I need to come back home and make our mind up. I want to be back in the Father's house. I want to get near Him. I want God to bless my life. While well, they come get a song quickly. Praise God. We're going to pray this morning. Draw nigh to Him. And He will draw nigh to thee. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. And it told thy love to me. But as long to rise in the arms of faith and be close, drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross when I have died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. I walked to the hospital. <clears throat> I've been with many families that have heard the bad news. I've been there when the doctor said, we've done all we can do. Nothing else, there's nothing else left. What do you do then? All hope is gone in this world. And you've just been given some bad news. Are you near the Lord enough to say, God, I know what the doctor said. I know what the reports say. And God, I know how things look. But God, I'm near you, the one that said, I, by his stripes, I'm healed. Lord, I'm, I'm near you. Whose report are you going to believe? We need to believe the report of the Lord. And today we see that in our own life. See, when we're in good health, we sometimes forget to get near to God. It's like someone out on the ocean and the in a ship. When the sun's shining and the waves are calm, they lay on the boat and sleep. But out of no 
bulwark of the storm. Wakes them up. Now fear is all over them. They should have been paying attention while the going was good. Then the storm is on the horizon. They make preparations. Maybe today you're doing good. Maybe today you're on that sea of life and everything's fine. But like this, things can change. One phone call, one problem in your life, one sickness, anything can happen. You need God near you. I've been with people when they passed away and left this world. They would tell me what they were seeing. They told me what they were hearing. I was in the room with them. I couldn't see that. I couldn't hear that. I th they even said that their mom and dad was in the room. And they were gone home. They were dead. But they showed up in the room. I was there. I didn't see no mom and dad. You know what happened to them? They were so near to God that God began to see them heavenly things. He was showing them heavenly things. They began to see in heavenly places. And when they began to see that, they would smile. You couldn't make them to stay after that because they drew near to the Lord. He drew near to them. And in the day of death, he, he began to show himself to them. T tonight, today, I, whatever you need from God, where are you walking? Who's directing your life? Who's talking to you? What's going on? How close are you? How spiritual are you? How faithful are you? What do you need God to do for you today? That's not like a hard thing to accomplish. Oh, you know, I got a good, man, I'm a mess. I got some good news for you. Here's all you got to do is say, Jesus, have mercy. I'm sorry. He'll break you back. Very simple solution. Very simple. Like the old saying goes, when my mom and dad, my mom and dad used to give me medicine, they say, it's good for what ails you. I thought I'd tell him, I'm not healing. Don't give me that. <laughs> Jesus is good for what ails you, spiritually. Now, I'm not talking to you about being a super Christian and all hyped up and, ooh, you know, I'm talking about have faith in God. Let God be near you. And here again, how it happens. You draw near to Him. He draws near to you. So what do you need? I'm asking you to stand to your feet this morning. What do you need from the Lord? <clears throat> draw me near. Draw me near, blessed Lord, to the cross while I have died. Draw me near. Draw me near, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sight. That blood still flows today to save your soul. That blood flows today change your life. I'm going to ask everyone here to gather around the altar, please. Every Christian, every sinner, every backslider, whatever you need. And I believe God will let you know when you start sensing the Lord, when you start feeling His touch, then you'll know you're near the cross. Come on, everybody pray some more. Let's pray. Ready to say it with me? It's been good to be in the house. Oh, the Lord. Tell somebody I really meant to.